Hey. Good. How are you and uh, all your loved ones and your cat doing? Uh... The cat, <laughs> the cat is doing good. I'm actually out of the city. I'm in um, this place near the border of Maharashtra and Gujarat, so just okay. north, north of Bombay, called Golvard. Okay. And uh, the cat is hiding in the bedroom just now. It's, the house is a bit bigger than she, what she's used to. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us, man. Uh, we've been uh, an admirer of yours for quite some time now. Actually, the first thing we ever saw you in was actually um, a couple years back in Padmavat, uh, yeah. where which was a, a phenomenal film, a phenomenal performance by you. So, uh, you want to tell me a little bit about working on such a big, massive film such as that? Because I know you've worked on those much smaller films like Death in the Gunge and, and other things like that. But what was it like working on a, such a massive set like Padmavad? We shot it over a year. I mean, I think I was in one of the first shots of the film. And then I was on, I was, uh, I had a little bit left on like the last day. So it was over a year and two days, I think. Mm. The film was shot over. And in the middle, in between, I tried to do other projects <laughs> because there's no other way, really. And uh, I'd never been on something of that scale. And I'd never seen that attention to detail and grandiosity in the sets because it was, it was, it was both. It was the, that feeling of walking into an enormous space, which gives you which just gives you a feeling already, you know, you bet you don't have to create a, a feeling of a grand entrance because you, you walk into a place that makes you feel like you've made a grand entrance. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was cool. And then the attention to detail, which is like the little detailing work done on each pillar and the aging and just the hand painted work is just, Phenomenal, phenomenal. I did another film with him um, called Gangubai. It's coming out in February. Oh, with and, Alia, right? Uh, yeah. Gotcha. And even on that, I mean, very different scenario, but he's recreated an older version of Bombay. And just the production design is like the aging on the walls. You could look at each little panel of wall and think that somebody has hand painted this and it's just phenomenal. So anyway, the, the, uh, the scale of that was great. Uh, being able to, you know, having a, a, a fair amount of time in between schedules was also a nice thing, a new thing for me. Uh, mm. I was used to just going in at least with Nuja and getting it done in 13 days. So. You know, in case you wanted to bring any other shades to the character, you you, you should have done it in those 13 days. <laughs> uh, um, whereas here you could take a break and be like, hmm, maybe, I, maybe the character needs this. Maybe the character needs a bit of this. Why don't I throw in a little bit of this as well? You know, there was that time to let things settle and reimagine the arc and think well i played this scene in this way and now i'm only coming to the the precursor to this scene a month later so i, I really have time to think how i want to uh how i want to move backwards you know how, how uh, based on something i've shot that's later in the film how do i want to set it up now it's it's a, in, fun fun what was um, interested with that? What was the longest break you had in the shooting schedule? I don't remember. Was it, but okay, it must but be a month, said, like, two months, at least yeah. several weeks, oh. a month. Yeah, wow. Yeah, at times. Yeah, was um, it, and there were so many the delays. Time? It wasn't even their fault. They were that that production had so many mishaps. The yeah. People came and set fire to the set at some point. Um, yeah. 
uh, another time in Rajasthan, they came, uh, the Karni Sena showed up and d- demolished the set. So there were lots of start, starts and stops as well. Yeah. Uh, was it difficult or to get back into character at times or did you enjoy that because you got to bring more to the character? I enjoyed it. It was, it's almost like, um, I started to think of it because I was doing three or four projects at the same time. I, I started to think of it kind of like you take the pin off and the groove is already more or less set. You just put the needle back on the record and the same thing kind of keeps playing. And, you know, you just have to know which uh, groove to slot it into. Yeah. So it was a bit like, it was a bit like that. You kind of, I think the first two schedules while you're still figuring out who the person is, that is difficult. And then after, uh, after that, without wanting to take away the idea of still being surprising or uh, create surprising moments, uh, you more or less have a sense of who the person is. And, and now you're just slotting back into that general shape that you and the director have come upon together. Mm-hmm. And you had said it was the um, first time you were on a production of that massive scale. Was that also your first time getting to know and work with Runveer? Yeah, yeah. First yeah. time getting to know him, yeah. Yeah, I hadn't really, we'd met on and off. Uh, he was one of the, I mean, many people claim to have suggested me for the part, so I don't know, but <laughs> Ranveer claims to be one of the people that also suggested me for the part. Um, Y'all had great chemistry on screen. Was that just yeah, easy? Really was, was that just easy to do uh, with, with both of you? Really easy. Yeah. Yeah, really easy. yeah. Very reactive. Um, actor was basically unafraid to make big, bold choices and really try to fill them. Uh, which just means, you know, if you offer something, you're going to get something in return to play off of. And that just makes your life so much easier. <laughs> Yeah, as opposed to offering things, the scene falling dead, you waiting for the actor to finish their line, you can say your line because <laughs> it wasn't that at all. It was very, it was very, it was yeah. like a little, it was like a little tinderbox. We didn't, we weren't even sure where we were gonna go. We would sometimes decide things separately, but oftentimes we would, um, you know, take, go to the side and be like, let's laugh at this point, no matter what, we're going to laugh at this point, you know, mm-hmm. we're going to, we're going to build to that. Whereas other times we would just play off the energy of the other person and, and see uh, where we could go with the scene. And <laughs> yeah, there would be times where a scene which we really thought we would be going to be playing a bit more sober and serious. We'd be like screaming and excited. <laughs> and I was wondering, you know, that's when the director steps in. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Tone that down a notch. Just a little bit. <laughs> uh, you know, when we, when we saw you in that, uh, there's a lot of actors that when we see them, you can, and I know you can probably tell this as well as an actor that you, you can tell there's a level of both probably training as well as theater experience. Uh, and you're, you're one of those actors when we saw you, we were like, this is not a novice. This is somebody who knows this craft. I'm, I'd love to know, when did you know you wanted to be an actor? And what was that, that path for you to, at the beginning? Uh, recently, I think someone my mom came to set uh, on Rocket Boys, which is this series I'm shooting just now. And somebody was like, so when did you think that you became an, you know, wanted to be an actor? They asked me and she was like, well, there was never any, there was no other choice really. And um, I basically think that that's true. I don't think that I've ever been interested in anything else as much or with, mm, I've, I've just never been, I've, nothing else has, has stuck even remotely. Um, mm. It's always been kind of that this is telling stories, creating stories. I don't think 
I don't think I'm gen. I'm, I'm destined to be only on, only an actor. Perhaps uh, I do like the world building involved in being a director as well. But I've only done mm-hmm. that in uh, theater so far. I've never mm, yeah. uh, never even attempted with film only because I I still feel I'm I'm learning so much. Uh, it's only been. Five years since New Jack, mm-hmm. my my first film. So, yeah, I've been learned, a heck of a five I, years. Yeah, I've tried to learn as much as I can on the job, uh, and I feel I have a much better sense of like edit and how things are put together and how film acting is different from stage acting and uh, how it's not as well. How how it's also mm-hmm. not. You know, it really depends on how you're captured. But basically, that frame is king. You know, the frame is everything. It's everything. Yeah. And uh, you don't realize that as a stage actor coming in in the beginning, you're, you're a bit just like, my performance will carry through. And it's like, no, it just doesn't matter if it's not framed right. If they don't capture it, it just doesn't matter what you've done and how good it was. It really doesn't matter. So you are not that important. <laughs> Just try yeah. to do your best <laughs> and, and hope that they, they, they know what they're doing. And nine times out of 10, they do. Uh, <laughs> um, so you've done like so much. We've seen you not only obviously in films and, and TV shows or OTT, like Made in Heaven and um, stuff like that. But like you also do like music videos. Like we saw your Cold Mess mm-hmm. um, uh, thing, which was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we love that. Um, so, is it is it like important to you do uh, most performers to just do different things and like keep it keep it fresh so you don't get bored? Uh, yeah, I guess that's what it is. I really don't think about it in terms of uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I don't, I really don't think of the future mm-hmm. <laughs> or career building or. Mm-hmm. business aspect of it staying relevant all of these things are new concepts that people say to me since um being in things and being a bit more in the the public eye but i really for me it's just all about if something sounds interesting i'm happy to try it out if something sounds like it could be a fun project I'm, i'm happy to do that music video great concept I've known the director and the producer for a while. I know the co-actor. I've acted in a film with her that they actually directed and produced the same team. No brainer. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I, yeah. <laughs> are, are there are there certain uh, characters or even genres, but more specific characters that are that are, you are attracted to that you've noticed that are a particular kind of thing that uh or or is it the kind of story is it more the kind of story that attracts you um see this is mm, i don't know um i think that when i was still in doing theater there was no particular genre or, or a particular mm. type of person. I think after Nirja, I got slotted into and only offered a certain kind of role mm-hmm. right, for a certain amount of time, uh, which I was quite uncomfortable with. And I remember very, very naively giving interviews, being like, why would I be typecast after Nirja? Mm-hmm. I just don't even understand how that could be a concept. And then four years later, people are still asking me the same question. I'm like, can we move on to talk about anything? Else? <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, so it happened. <laughs> I was wrong. Yeah. I was absolutely yeah. wrong. And uh, I... So no, I don't think I'm particularly drawn. And now it's more like I want to just do different things than what I've done so far. I would love to do a comedy. I would love to do something light, but still the very subjective good, still what I would consider 
different. I'm, I was going to say a word like valuable, but I don't even know if I mean that. Uh, something I would still consider to be a watchable film, you know, but something I, I but I, 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 I kind of want to do something light and funny and something that makes people laugh and uh, only because I've got such serious roles. I've got I've played <laughs> some intense, <laughs> intense roles up until now. Even um, even a couple of things that are happening now, they're all quite intense. Uh, yeah. And, you know, sometimes you have a director that's seen me in some other things. And it just so happened that this film I did right now, she had watched Made in Heaven and, so she basically wanted that guy, you know, and it mm. just so happened that the shooting happened at the same time as Made in Heaven. And it's like, I don't want to be that guy in another thing. Right. I'm right. just, I'm just doing that in Made in Heaven season two. Please let me make a different character. Trust me, it'll be good. It'll, it, it's different than what you're thinking, but it'll be good. She didn't trust me. So we've got some kind of, uh, <laughs> we've, got, <laughs> we've got some kind of, <laughs> half-baked middle ground character between her idea and my idea but that's how it goes sometimes yeah yeah, yeah. we uh we talked to nawaz uh, uh i guess almost two years back now almost two years uh, ago yeah uh and he said after gangs everybody wanted to hand him a gun uh all the time and he's like i want i want to be handed the girl <laughs> yeah. from, from here on out so it's yeah. uh it, it happens to everyone it's awful, yeah. but you've done, you've now done uh, OTTs, film, uh, theater. What do you I think have, it's like? I have been aggressively in the last two or three years been avoiding a certain kind of work and been trying to, I guess the term is rebrand, but you know, it's more, more or less been like, I just don't want to, I just don't want to validate this type of role anymore only because people will just keep giving it to me because they'll say you're yeah. good at that and people don't have an imagination you have to show them you have to show people for them to believe it they, 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 they there's no other way there's no other way and it's not yeah. necessarily a, a, a complaint it's just the way it works uh, I, if I've never met you and I've only seen you in this one particular thing, I think you're good at only that. I, I would have to be shown proof otherwise for me to believe otherwise. Um, so I've been aggressively trying to take on different kinds of things. And I, get, I guess my favorite genre of role would be like, uh, you know, uh, like a hard guy, but with a heart of gold, you know, like a hard guy, but heart of gold. That would, I guess, be my, uh, and yeah, maybe some, some project where I get the girl, that would be a, a, a wonderful. Not, not two different girls, not, not cheating on one or. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not some bizarre love triangle where it's proved that I hate women, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, of that, let's talk about Made in Heaven because it was a phenomenal series, um, uh, and and hopefully it's uh, phenomenal for season two. Season season two. Really don't know what you. Okay, yeah, I didn't think. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the, <laughs> these, uh, you were you were essentially um, made the villain almost quite early on in the show, right? Um, because of what we learned until obviously we were learning the whole picture, and you're still kind of the villain. But um, what is it difficult sometimes for you to, uh, as an actor, to not judge a character? Um, no. No, okay. No, I, I, I've never liked this idea of uh, the, 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 the divine or the, the devil. It's just not my interest. I mm -hmm. don't believe it exists. I believe it's completely made up. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's, um, it's just a way for human beings to deal with their insecurities, I, 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 I imagine. Um, 
uh, either can't really be dealt with in a human way. And I feel the human way is the most interesting, the messy, flawed, weirder mm -hmm. way. Yeah. It's just a lot more interesting. So I've, <laughs> so I've never, so I've never believed in that. Like, for example, just now I'm playing Homi Baba and he's considered, a, I'm reminded of just how great of a man and his legacy all the time. For example, we shot recently somewhere and we, 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 we came out of this David Sassoon library in, in Bombay and the, the building right adjacent to the library was, you know, Homi Baba University. And then if you go somewhere else, you know, you, you, uh, this, is a, this is a man with a, who's considered a genius and the way people have responded to the trailer as well is, is off a certain way. And I disagree with that as well. Just like how I would disagree with you judging what we would consider a, a, a bad person, a villain. I, I, I disagree with both. Mm -hmm. I mean, both make the person un, unapproachable, unfeelable, unmalleable, uh, someone we can't relate to, someone we other. And I, I don't believe in that. They are people. They have been raised in a certain way. They have a variety of influences acting upon them. And they also do these other things. And the, the two are infinitely connected and infinitely interesting. And uh, uh, yeah, so I, I don't really judge them one way or the other, right from the beginning, I think, which is my, my new stance on uh, terrorist or hijacker is like, no, mm -hmm. absolutely not. I refuse to do it ever again, unless that person is the protagonist. Mm. Unless you're really going to understand what makes somebody like that. Unless you're really going to go into it, I have no interest in playing it because it's too easy to other the person, uh, wash your hands of any role you may have had in the creation of this person and uh, live your happy, good life where this person is, you know, the darkness. And I just don't believe that's true. We're all the darkness. Mm. Yeah, that, that approach to the craft is evident in what you do, particularly in Adil in Made in Heaven. And I was wondering um, how much of, because like it's, it's easy if an actor goes the route of just accentuating those negatives and making that person the antagonist, it becomes too easily a cliche of a character. And one I'm dimensional. interested to know, boring. yeah, very one dimensional Sorry, yeah. and boring. It, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. How much of the, how much of, uh, whether it was the backstory or just everything you did to not judge this character and justify everything he did from a very real place. Was that given to you just inherently in such a great script? Was that collaborative with the director or was that your own choices? Um, totally collaborative with the entire writing team and directorial team. Um, I think I remember being in college and being obsessed with this girl who had a boyfriend at the time and uh when 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 uh, when judged by me in the situation the person has responded with i love two people what can i tell you mm. and at the moment it was distasteful to me and then i found myself mm. in the same situation <laughs> years <laughs> later where i, I love two people and it was true and i didn't want to hurt either i really didn't mm. I didn't know what to do. I was in a situation where I really didn't know what to do. I had, I didn't have the life experience to handle it delicately or honorably. Mm. Um, and I feel it happens to more people than people care to admit. Um, mm -hmm. So I tried to bring that to the table. I mean, in, many ways tara is a very good match for adil she is quite ruthless and business-minded and uh twisty and will do what it takes to get what she wants and i think if he could get out of the mindset of thinking of her as 
his assistant, he would be able to value all of those things in a different way. But I don't think he's programmed to be able to really do that. So I do think that uh, there is this slightly more fiery, um, uh, mercurial attraction to her, uh, which he wants to douse completely by saying, take care of my mother and take care of the house and serve me breakfast and A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Um, whereas with uh, Feza, there's a much uh, more uh, comfortable home. I can save you, but you know me and understand where I come from. And uh, so I think there's, you know, there he's, he's stuck between these two different things. Does he want the, does he want the softer and easier in one way situation, but difficult in a different way? I think he will always look down on somebody who doesn't have it in them to go get it you know go get what they want which i don't think feza has uh so whereas with tara he, he she has that but he'll look down on the other things which is like a classist patriarchal way of looking at life so i don't think he's a good guy <laughs> i think he's a product of his environment mm -hmm. uh Yeah, yeah. that's what's so beautiful yeah. about that show is I'm sure, and I know you've heard this before, is how gray every single character is. Like they don't, every single character has their, their great uh, qualities and, and the stuff they mess up. Just, you know, it, it makes them very human, right? It makes them very real, which a lot of shows don't typically do, especially with their leads. Their leads are normally perfect, round, wonderful people. Uh, <laughs> and so yeah <laughs> uh and so that's it's one of the things that's so wonderful about the show uh one scene uh, there's two scenes in particular with you in them that were some of my favorites was towards the very end with you and uh sorbita uh when basically the breakup scene in the uh in the room which was yeah. shot almost exactly like a play is what we said after the scene was it did it feel like that during the during the shooting of that scene Oh, yeah. It was like continuity. Who knows where that's gone? Uh, <laughs> I, I hope I hope they got it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if, I, if we can do it again. Um, so we shot it a couple of times and kind of said just we, we got to hit this one position because that's a clear position that we can re-hit and we got to hit this other position. But apart from that, it was a bit, it was a bit, it, it was more like a play and whatever they got, they got. Um, yeah. It was, yeah. It was, it was, a, it shoot. was yeah. It was an absolutely fantastic scene. You both killed Great it. Scene. And then the, the other one was the dick measuring contest with you and VJ Raz uh, yeah. in the in the meeting, <laughs> which was, uh, was, yeah. was that so fun to shoot? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty straightforward, actually. It was pretty, as it, as it, it was, it was just written that way, really simple and really, uh, and of course he's such a good performer. He adds all of these other things. Uh, uh, yeah, it was fun to shoot, but it was yeah. also, I just remember it feeling very normal and easy. It was, it, it, it didn't have the same kind of like intensity as uh, the, the, the play breakup. Uh, right. Yeah, it was, a yeah, cause everyone, it was, it was polite knives out, right? It yeah. was, no one was out of control. Yes. Everyone was in hyper control, actually. Yeah. So it's, it's different. Mm -hmm. It's a different kind of enjoyment, but yeah. Yeah, oh, it was so fun. So I, I would love to know, we asked this of every actor that we talked to, because this is what is most matters to us so much is the process that you would go about uh, as an actor, taking away the fact that obviously you've got to go to the script and you're going to figure out the who, what, where, when, and why. Uh, I'd love to know, do you have a particular kind of way you create your characters, or does it just differentiate based on what you're given in the script and what the project is? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
great answer. Uh, great answer. <laughs> yeah. And um, scene. <laughs> it, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I come from the tradition of repetition, rehearsal. Mm. Don't worry too much. Just keep trying it in different ways. You learn different things just through that repetition. Um, I find that once I have a sense of who the character is, then I just need to read it a couple of times, but actually like in, in performance mode, not in um, just reading, reading it mode. And then I get ideas and I, I really don't know where they come from. And uh, mm. sometimes they feel good. And um, if, the, if uh, I had a really collaborative director on Rocket Boys who was very interested in my ideas and we would really sit on the scenes before and um, try to make them as um, surprising and, and, and true to my character as we could. Uh, and it was just lovely having somebody who, you know, had the time to care about it as much as I did. Uh, and wanted to rework them as well. And I really can't say there's anything much more than trying to imagine who the guy is. And then once you kind of have a handle on that, then just trying to imagine how you can make the scene as surprising and true and uh, varied as well, especially when we shot two seasons together. So, you know, you have the opportunity to show so many sides of a person in two, two seasons, you, you really mm -hmm. do. And I think people that waste that opportunity, uh, it's very, it's sad to me when I watch, you can really show so many aspects of a person that actually, if you spend time with them, you would see nobody is one way. Everybody is multiple ways. Mm -hmm. What was the question? <laughs> you answered it perfectly. It was, <laughs> you've answered it perfectly. It was about your process. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> And I'm guessing a lot I of just process. basically think repetition. It's just the, the trick is repetition. I mean, you can have all the other things that you want. Uh, um, people have more spiritual approaches and think of animals and A, B, C, D, E, but essentially just keep reading it. Just read it over and over again. And try to, I think that's hmm. pretty yeah. fail safe. And I'm guessing a lot of that comes from your theater background of you like doing rehearsal because I know there's a bunch of actors who don't actually like rehearsals because they think it takes away the, what, the spontaneity or whatever, right? Um, I think that is stupid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm guessing that's that's you like doing the the like you just said repetition of it, the rehearsing uh, of scenes to get it to get it right and right. Yeah, you have to you have you have to rehearse to make it seem natural. Otherwise, you're speaking words that aren't your own. How can you possibly, in the moment, make it look particularly spontaneous? You can only go with your best, the best thing you can come up with on that day. What if you're in a bad mood? What if you're in? What if you're upset? What if you're tired? What if you're rushed? What if somebody has just uh, you know, casually demeaned you off, off camera, you know, what, what if the AD has been rude? What if, you know, there are a thousand factors that can go wrong in, 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 in the moment and you're relying on that. You're relying on, on that. And then you see what the person spontaneously comes up with. And it's like, <laughs> you should have rehearsed, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> but in that light, do you have a preference? Because like, there's the, obviously the different kinds of things that happen for actors in in theater versus versus TV and film. 
but like in in a play there's the endless discovering of a character by doing it over and over and over again but in a tv series there's this unique capacity to see this character go through new experiences and you don't have to create backstory because that character actually did that you filmed that do you have a preference of those two formats or are they just do you love them both yeah i love them both my my, my unfortunate preference winds up being with film and with uh, web series is only because I like the form of that better as a viewer. I, mm. I, I prefer going to a film than to a play. It's just always been true for me. It's not mm. nothing against theater. It's just been true for me. As a kid, I never went to theater. I just watched movies. I could be put in front of the TV and they'd come back five hours later and be like, Jim, the movie has been over since two hours. What have you been watching for three hours? And it'll be the news or it'll be the weather. Or I'll just be like fascinated by this person on the, on the screen. Um, so because of that, you know, if I'm getting film work, if I'm getting web series work, I tend to move in, in that direction. Um, but nothing beats the, the experience of performing for a live audience and really feeling that when you're surfing them and you kind of have them here and you can, you know, you can go like this and mm -hmm. they laugh and you can go like this and they'll cry and you can go like this and they'll feel choked. You know, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah. Also, just the live feedback you can leave and you can know was it good? Was it bad? What was it? Whereas here you're always guessing how will it work? Will it work well? Will they edit out my good bits because they got to even out the scene? Uh, right. Will they, you know, pick that take that I they made me do, even though I was like, please don't make me do this. <laughs> and then, <laughs> you know, because they have yeah. a different idea of the, the right. thing and they're trying to tell a story. And at the end of the day, it's up to them. And you really have to let it go and let it be in their hands as opposed to on stage where I'm my own editor. I can okay. ignore all the stuff I disagreed with you about and just do my own thing. And if the audience <laughs> likes it, you'll be like, see, I cast him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, oh, absolutely. And, you know, I, this is that, I miss that. I really, I really miss that, that because then, you know, every, the whole audience got to see who could do it that day. And some days you can't do it, and some days you can't do it. Uh, whereas in a film, you don't know who could do it that day. I watched scenes that I edited, to get, edited together, and I was like, oh, I could not do it that day. But they've <laughs> saved me. They have saved me in the edit. Right. Yeah. Or I watched a scene where I was like, that guy did not know his lines. I mean, we spent six and a half extra hours shooting a single scene because he didn't know his lines. But it, it's working fine in the sh in the scene so it's interesting yeah it's interesting I, I i never like to give up either i'd always like yeah. to be able to i'd always hope that i could still come back to do a play and you know uh i'll still be able to project loud enough to get through it <laughs> do you have any plans currently to uh, go back to theater because of covid it's not, not doing that just now, there's no, the plays have started up again, um, but I'm not really, I'm not signing anything new. Uh, I guess it would just have to be a really interesting play. Or, yeah. No one's come to me with that yet. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not really interested in jumping in and like devising a piece anymore. You know, like I want, I want the situation to be you know, I want it to be of a certain quality, I guess, yeah. now. I, I don't know what else to say. I, I, otherwise, I'd rather just do nothing. I'd rather just mm. sit around and read and take classes. Yeah, and, absolutely. No. Yeah. <clears throat> are, there, are there people that through your life and even today that have inspired you or currently inspire you, whether they were actors that you've loved their work or just some personal heroes of your own? Absolutely. Uh, so many people. 
Um, gosh. <laughs> I mean, if we're talking, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if we're talking about actors specifically, there yeah. there are just so 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 many actors that I watch, and I'm like, oof. Uh, I know Joaquin Phoenix has become like hot now because of <laughs> Joker, etc. But like for years, I've been saying that he's just something else. Um, uh, after I said so many, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to find them right now. <laughs> um, I, can, I, can, I can only, I can only, uh, I, I get, no one. I, I get like, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. I, get, I do get, um, I do get, I've been noticing that I get tunnel, tunnel vision as in, if I'm in one project and I'm learning those lines and those are the lines in my head. And if someone, you know, a year after a film comes out, is like, why don't you say your famous line from that movie? I'm like, I don't know, remember what it is. <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, and, uh, uh, or they'll be like, you lip sync this song perfectly. What are the lyrics? And it's like, I used to know them. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> hackers so today, don't live in those worlds like uh, the fans do, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and today, all I'm thinking when you say this is like, oh, I'm reading this book called The New History of Humanity. And the guy is talking about how basically all European thought has essentially come from like indigenous people from other countries. And I'm like, yes, that makes <laughs> sense. That makes sense. This is my hero. I, this is this is motivating go. me to you know uh, think about yeah. the world in a different way. It's fascinating. This book it's it's really incredible. Uh, I'm not too far into it, but uh, I've been thinking about this for a while. Where like, I mean, the propaganda machine. I mean, it's just the 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 PR the PR of like European intellectual thought. And as and then being the guardians mm. of culture worldwide is so strong and so deeply rooted, especially in colonial countries, uh, mm -hmm. that getting out of that mindset is it's always felt something about it has always felt wrong. And reading this book that really they're looking about how most of the, uh, what's it called, the enlightenment period where the, the, all the ideas of like democracy and mm -hmm. civilization, et cetera, that we now consider, because that's how history is taught to us, the cornerstone of, you know, thought, uh, right. Is mostly borrowed from indigenous critiques of European <laughs> culture. <laughs> and it's like, well, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree. Um, That's awesome. Uh, oh, but, uh, yeah, so so many people. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, Back on the question. Good. <laughs> uh, uh, so many people. Jedi Palawat recently. Um, if we're if we're going if we're going with the Indian, no, as it and always has been an inspiration, just in terms of like jumping genres and proving that you don't have to look a certain way and you don't have to uh, be a certain way in order to uh, get roles and play interesting deep characters. Uh, I love the idea that you know Scam did so well. Uh, this year at the film fair OTT, they swept all the awards. Mm -hmm. It's cool yeah. to see a no, you know an outsider, Pratik Gandhi, who hadn't really had many roles before then, come up and you know be the most talked about uh, person um, performance-wise of the year. And yeah, also to see just a story that has been told in a different way, in a more interesting and layered way than perhaps how Bollywood tells stories sometimes. Um, yeah. you know, on, on all of that. Yeah. We're even looking at, 
And then if we're looking like internationally, who else is really good right now? Who else is out there where I'm like, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, marriage story. Uh, mm. Adam Driver's in everything these days. So again, yeah. like there's that, there's that unfortunate like thing that happens where like if you see too much of a person, you start to be like, ah, well, they're always going to be good. You know, they're going to yeah. be fine. <laughs> um, uh, but he's in marriage story. He's just so yeah. good. Great film. Really, really Absolutely good. great really. film. It's just so good. It's just so well put together. It's yeah. Weird. Yeah, that actual, your, and, that and, last, go ahead. See? I was going to say that last scene in, in Made in Heaven actually felt like marriage story almost. <laughs> like that, that, that yeah. scene that we oh, talked yeah, about, that's what that is. Punching the wall. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I should have. Like. I should have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, there was digging of, on you on, online a little bit. I don't know if you've seen this. Uh, there's like a, a pretty big drive that people want you to play in the Saradin Shah either son or like him in a biopic. Have you heard seen that? I would love to. I would yeah. love to. <laughs> yeah. I, would I think love it'd be a great think, casting, honestly. Let's let's start as son. I mean, he has a, he has a son, but let's start <laughs> as son, and then let's we can yeah. We can do a bio thing yeah. afterwards. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was that aging app at some point uh, mm, where they, uh -huh. they age your yeah. face, and I put it in, and I mean, it just came out messy. <laughs> <laughs> I can yeah. see it, man. It'd be a great cast. I can absolutely yeah. see it. Well, it, speaking yeah. of I, projects we, that you would we, be... no, go ahead, go ahead, Jeff. Oh, there was there was a project once called Rogan Josh, Rog Rogan yes. Josh, I think. Yes. And yeah. Uh, yeah. where he does have a son at the table, and the dates didn't work out, but that was going to be the first time ah. it was going to potentially happen. Yeah. Yeah, we look forward that. to it in the future. <laughs> yeah, we've seen that. Yeah. Was, well, speaking of potential projects, is is there anything you want? us to know about and the entire stupid family that you're currently working on that we can be looking out for and we can be supporting i don't think i'm allowed to talk about the, the things rocket boys That's is cool. coming out yeah jan 28th i'm very excited about it I, we've really worked hard um i hope it's brilliant um it's about these two very fascinating men, Homi Baba and Vikram Sarabhai. Homi Baba was the father of the Indian uh, nuclear program, and Vikram Sarabhai was the father of the Indian space program. And um, this first season, I don't want to, I don't want to reveal too much, but essentially, it, it, it follows their friendship and their disagreements and agreements and their head butting through their lives and they've really tried to paint um you know it's a fictionalized version of course of of, of the events it's the, the but we've tried to we've tried to create two characters that you know are strong in different ways and the way that they clash is just very different one is a bit more flamboyant and a bit more uh, strong-headed but you can also rely on him uh, to do the right thing and the other one seems a bit more you know pensive and a bit slower about his decisions etc but needs that push to get things done you know and it's nice to have the two of them. One is very much a pacifist. The other one is very much a realist. And um, just how those those two different thought processes come into conflict right at the time that India was getting its independence and moving on forward. And the show goes all the way up until Homi Baba's death and Vikram Sarabhai's death in season two. Mm -hmm. And we've shot mm -hmm. season one and most of season two. There's about seven days left, but we're taking a break to uh, release season one and then come back and uh, finish off season two. Um, anyway, I'm very excited about it. It's going to be on Sony Live. Uh, I really hope you, I hope you guys watch it and everyone. Yeah. I hope everyone watches yeah. it. Yeah, I, I really do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, has a trailer come out yet? 
No, the trailer hasn't come out yet, but you can go onto my Instagram and see uh, there are these two clips that have been released. Uh, one is uh, the two of us having a conversation on the day independence is announced. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. another one is uh, my character talk. Well, I don't want to reveal who I'm talking gotcha. about, but you can see the, you can see the clip. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was put, uh, that was put out on Homi Baba's birthday. Um, mm-hmm. Sounds like Sony LIV is uh, putting out a lot of good content lately, man. That's uh, yeah. that's exciting. That's very yeah. exciting. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, well, thank you so much for talking. I want to finish it off with a little bit of rapid fire here uh, okay. for you to uh, answer. So first off, coffee or chai? Coffee. Uh, favorite favorite <laughs> Shakespeare play? Uh, ooh. King Lear. Uh, favorite alcoholic beverage if you drink beer as you've been seeing. <laughs> what kind of beer what kind of beer are you drinking i'm just drinking a regular kingfisher uh, uh favorite snack um i mean this pizza count as a snack sure of course it yeah, does sure. uh your favorite hollywood director um oh i don't know name a couple that you like yeah uh okay um david fincher uh -hmm. wes anderson uh Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) both phenomenal i mean i I very much enjoyed dune uh Mm -hmm. dennis villeneuve um but yeah, let's yeah, let's, let's, yeah. let's leave it. Uh, in your favorite Hollywood film, yeah, favorite uh, Hollywood film. Ah. I don't know. I'll let's say make it, let's make it a classic. Classic, okay. okay let's uh, make it a classic. Apocalypse Now. Mm. Uh, and your favorite Indian film, any region. I'm going to say Salam Bombay. Mm. Mm. Okay. And your favorite curse word? Uh, Chew. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> your favorite book? Uh, I, mm. Is it the one you're reading right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I figured. I mean, that's not true, but why not yeah i just read my family and other animals by gerald doro also and uh, i love that book that book is so good (laughs) have you read this book my family and other animals oh it's brilliant you gotta read it it's about this english family very funny quirky english family that goes to corfu and it's all told from the eyes of the like youngest member of the family that is a is a, a obsessed with the natural world uh mm. and just it's so good it's so good it's brilliant oh check that out that sounds <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun well thank you so much for talking to us man we really appreciate it we think you're so so talented everything you've ever been in we've always really enjoyed your performance and 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 the films that you you decide to do we're so looking forward to everything the rocket boys the the I, the thing i can't pronounce with santi lube and sali and alia and in anything in the future that you have going uh, we're very much looking forward to it so thank you so much for talking to us rick thank you thank you so much for having yeah me. yeah sincerely we don't um we don't want to talk to just everybody who's in the entertainment industry. What, what really gravitates toward us because in the heart of our core, we're actors who just love film and love this craft. And from the first moment we saw you, we, we knew the caliber of who you were and the continued work you do is just uh, exactly what Corbin just said. We, we really believe in you. We love what you do with this art form. We think you're at the, the top of the craft and we wish you all the best and you'll know we'll be supporting whatever you're doing and wanna know all about it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks Thank for your you. time. It was, it was great talking to you, man. <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah, great night. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you didn't lead with that. I wouldn't have been able to speak for the next <laughs> five or ten minutes. <laughs> End off on that one. Cool. Yeah, have a good one, man. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. Yep. Good. Well, good. Good day to you guys. Good night. To oh me. yeah. Thank yeah. You. Good, Thank you. Yeah. Good night. <laughs>